Hi, I'm here today with attorney Rachel Alters, and we're going to discuss a case out of the Western District of Washington, which was a federal ERISA disability lawsuit that was filed against the Hartford Insurance Company. Now, it was not a case that was handled by our law firm, but since we track all of the latest cases around the country, and this one happens to be a good victory for a claimant, I thought it would be a good idea to discuss it, and hopefully someone can benefit from this information. So can you give us some background on this case against Hartford? Sure. This is a case where Hartford had approved um, a woman who was um, disabled due to fibromyalgia. She had a severe back issues and they approved her for short term and for long term disability. I think they paid her close to two years. And then they decided after two years they were going to terminate her benefits because in their mind and in their peer review physician's opinion, her condition had improved and she could go back to work. So she went through her appeal process um, and Hartford still upheld the decision to terminate the benefits, so she filed a lawsuit in federal court. According to the judge, who was extremely upset with Hartford's decision, um, that Hartford uh, fell below the standard of care and, and was arbitrary and capricious in many of the determinations that it made regarding her ability to go back to work. So was this a change of definition case? Um, I think it was just on the borderline. She may have had a week or two left. Um, but I, I believe she was still under ONOC, but at the end of the claim, the judge decided that not only was she disabled from her own occupation, but that she was still disabled from any gainful occupation after the ruling. So what techniques were used by Hartford to deny this claim? Hartford decided that they were going to do a paper review of her medical records. They hired a peer review physician, which is often done, somebody who never meets the claimant, but just reviews records from her, med her doctors and looks at her doctor's opinions and renders his own opinion as to whether he believes the claimant is able to go back to work. So what Hartford's physician said was there was improvement in her condition, that she no longer was not able to sit for six or eight hours a day. In his opinion, she could sit. Um, for at least four hours a day and could, could do a sedentary job. Um, her treating physician said the complete opposite. The court noted that her treating physician's records were very consistent in documenting that her condition had not improved. Actually, it had, it had gotten worse. And her doctors had written specifically in the attending physician statements that she is not any better. She is actually worse and she cannot do sedentary work. Hartford completely ignored that and gave more weight to their hired peer review doctor opinions than any of the doctor's opinions that actually met her, treated her, and knew her, you know, on a on a personal basis. Yeah, I, I, I still, I don't understand how the peer review doctor who never sees the claimant can say, oh, you're okay to sit for four hours. How does a doctor and, and how does an insurance company get away with that kind of uh, information to try to support a denial? I mean, unfortunately, you know, the some courts allow this and, and don't don't slap the wrist of the insurance companies who are clearly just hiring these physicians to render opinions that aren't accurate and aren't true. And unfortunately, a lot of these claimants cannot go back to work. They can't sit for extended periods of time due to pain and other issues that they're having. So the court was very upset with Hartford and said, you know, we're not going to allow this and we're going to reverse the decision. They also based the reversal on the decision on many of the other things that Hartford did in the denial of her claim. Um, for example, they, they said that she was approved for Social Security Disability. However, they disagreed with Social Security Disability's decision, but they didn't explain why. And the court said specifically, if you're going to disagree with the Social Security's decision to render her disabled, you have to explain how, how and why you came to that decision, and they failed to do that. Right, so Hartford had their typical boilerplate language to say, we considered Social Security disability and our standards are different than their standards, right. so therefore we're not giving that um, the weight based upon the new information that we have, which is, in my opinion, basically their same boilerplate bullshit line. Right, and they're not allowed to do that. The court called them out on it and said that's not acceptable. You have to specifically state why you don't disagree with Social Security because obviously Social Security came to their decision for a reason and they had evidence to back it up so Hartford had to give specific reasons and they failed to do right. so. A, a lot of people watch our videos who are on claim and hope to stay on claim mm -hmm. and I think what what really helped this particular claimant win in this particular case from what we know from what the court said is that her doctors continue to really document her medical condition 
right. um, her symptoms, her findings, her limitations, her restrictions, and also the deterioration of her medical condition, not noting an improvement. Right. All too often we see claimants who just don't have good medical support or they get complacent in being on claim for a year, two years, five years, 10 years, and basically the disability insurance company looks at the records and says, oh, well, you don't have medical support here, so we're gonna cut you off. So right. I think the important lesson is always continue to document your medical records with your treating doctors. Always make sure you're continuously going to the doctor and not letting your guard down because these disability insurance companies, especially Hartford, mm -hmm. will cut you off at any opportunity that they have. So Absolutely. what was the court's, the court has different remedies they can exercise and what did this court uh, do at the end of the day? The court decided that they were going to um, approve her benefits, pay her past benefits that she was owed, and then the court actually rendered her um, disabled from any gainful occupation. So the Hartford had not done an any occupation review yet, uh, but the court basically made it for them. They made that decision and said she's not able to do any gainful occupation, which is essentially the same standard as Social Security. What other remedy could the court have taken? They could have remanded the decision back to Hartford to do another review, to go through all the medical records again and hire whoever they wanted to hire to determine if she was disabled from any occupation. And the court basically bypassed that and said, you know what? We don't like how you've behaved. We're going to render her disabled from any gainful occupation. You need to put her back on claim and continue to pay her. From a legal standpoint now, this was the district court. Is this done and this claimant's going to go ahead and get paid now? Or what, what, are, what could potentially happen? I mean, the hopes are that the claimant gets her back benefits, gets put on claim. Hartford continues to pay her to age 65, assuming that she can no longer work or doesn't get better. However, unfortunately, Hartford does have the power to cut her off again, and that would require her to do a whole other um, administrative appeal and end up back in court you know, possibly in front of another judge who wouldn't be as fair. What about the legal decision? Does Hartford have the right to appeal that decision? They do. Hartford can appeal the decision, and if it goes to the appellate court and Hartford does win, then the outcome obviously is going to be different. And, and how long can that appeal process take? Years. Um, is there, a lot of people think that just because you win at the district court that now the claimant's going to get paid for the duration of their policy and Hartford can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Is that true? No, it's not. Actually, Hartford does have the power to cut the claimant off if they believe that the medical records that they're reviewing and the doctors are not supportive um, and the claimant is showing some signs of improvement, they can cut her off or they could follow her with surveillance and find her doing something that you know they believe is opposite of what she claims she could do or couldn't do and yeah, could cut her off at that point. Right, a lot of people yeah. don't understand that this is a month to month evaluation, even right. sometimes day to day, and how often do you get calls where they go, I've done two of my appeals on my own, I'm just tired of dealing with them, I want you to do it, Right. because they put me on, they cut me off, they put me on, they cut me off, and right. I think you can end that cycle if you know how to manage the claim. I think having legal representation helps um, because it allows you to fight back in it from a legal standpoint as opposed to just trying to take care of yourself, but getting the guidance to know how to document the claim, how to fill out the claim forms, how to properly fill out the intending physician statements, trying to stop the, the behind-the-back phone calls to the carrier, right. um, the Hartford Field interviews, those kinds of things. So there's lots of techniques that our lawyers can help you with. Um, no matter what stage your claim is with, with Hartford or any long-term disability insurance company, we're always available for a free phone consultation. Our lawyers can help you anywhere in the country, and we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.